September 26, 2022, the biggest act of sabotage of the century had happened, and that was the Nord Stream sabotage. 300,000 tons of natural gas went to the atmosphere. Who did it? What was Nord Stream? Who did it belong to? And what are the geopolitical consequences of that act? These are the things we're going to be covering in today's video. Without any further ado, let's get straight into the video of today. So, as I mentioned in the introduction, we're going to be talking about Nord Stream sabotage. But before we go into the sabotage, we're going to talk briefly about Nord Stream, how big it is, how deep it is in the ocean, who built it, how long did it take to build. Then we're going to be talking about the explosions and which pipes got damaged with that explosion. Then we're going to be talking about a few theories about who did it and their motivation. And finally, we're going to be giving our view on what we believe to be the real villains or the real perpetrators of this sabotage. Let's talk about Nord Stream construction. The project itself had begun in 1997 and that came right after the collapse of Soviet Union or the end of the Cold War. And this project was going to be a landmark of the integration of Russia back into the West. Right after the Cold War, the dispute between capitalism and socialism or communism. And of course, capitalism won, but Soviet Union has been dissolved. And there was a need for Russia to reintegrate itself with the West. And that project was going to be one of the landmarks that would mark that integration where Russia was going to be supplying energy commodities, natural gas, to Germany. Now, the Nord Stream construction was a big endeavor. The whole thing started in 2010 and the construction happened underwater. Now, it's important to understand that underwater there has its own challenges. You have corals, we have wrecks, and you have to respect those wrecks as well as respecting the seabeds under the sea while yet still protecting the integrity of the pipes. Now everything happens on the depth of 80 meters under the water where there's no sunlight with a lot of challenges. Now the whole project laid four pipes and was done in two phases. Each phase laying two pipes and the pipes were labeled A and B. Now you can see on this map how much distance has to be covered. It's a total of 1200 kilometers with pipes of 1.5 meters in diameter. So it's a very huge endeavor. It's a big challenge as you can see on this map. Now on the 26th of September 2022, explosion have damaged those pipes. Now remember, those pipes are made of very thick steel and they're covered with a layer of concrete. Three explosions happen about 80 kilometers northwest of the initial blast and 80 kilometers east of the Swedish coast, as you can see on this image. Now, those explosions send 300,000 tons of natural gas into the atmosphere. Now, the white bubbles caused by those gas could be picked up on pictures on satellites, which means it could be seen from space. And also, the explosion caused a small earthquake, which was picked on a seismograph 24 kilometers away. Now, with the explosion and the geyser, ships were ordered to stay away because of the amount of gas that was being released into the atmosphere. So they cleared the water space and the airspace right after the explosion. Now, given the nature of the explosions, the distance, and the fact that those explosions damaged three of the four pipes, they concluded that this was a deliberate act of sabotage. So once that was determined to be a sabotage, we start to have a few questions such as, who do we suspect? Who could gain from this? What are the geopolitical implications of this? And for Germany, the question was, what about my energy security? After all, Germany was receiving cheap energy commodities from Russia for a very long time, and Germany was heavily dependent on this pipeline to continue to receive cheap gas from Russia. And it's not just Germany that got affected by this. Russia also got a big hit. After all, Russia was receiving $700 million per day for energy commodity, which was providing to Europe and mainly to Germany. More than a year later, we still do not know who's responsible for this. We have a lot of speculation, but mostly we have two main suspects. We have the US and we have Russia. After all, Joe Biden had promised that if Russia invade Ukraine, there will be no Nord Stream. Now, the United States kept pointing fingers at Russia, saying that Russia wants to undermine the energy security of Europe because of the conflict with Ukraine. Now, because the complexity involved in pulling this off, the two main suspects is still Russia and the US because they have very strong navy and they have military divers who are capable of doing this. Remember, we're talking about 80 meters under the water without any sunlight in total dark. Not to mention the amount of pressure that the water has. Now, with those two main suspects, we need to look at motives. What would be the motivation for the US? 
what would be the motivation for Russia? Now, the motivation could be causing geopolitical tensions in Europe. It could be the US trying to be punitive to Russia for invading Ukraine, or it could be a country that just feels solidarity for Ukraine and feel like punishing Vladimir Putin for the attack on Ukraine. Now, because the United States of America and most of the West point fingers at Vladimir Putin, they came with theories on why he did it. And of course, them, the main motivation was to hurt Germany. Remember, those pipes do not belong to Russia. Those pipes were built with funds from Germany, France, and Netherlands. So in theory, those pipes belong to Europe more than they belong to Russia. And according to them, the motivation for Vladimir Putin to do the sabotage was to hurt Germany because Germany was the second and is still the second biggest donor of funds to Ukraine. That was one of the main motivations viewed by those who defend the theory that Vladimir Putin did this. Not everyone in the West bought the idea that Vladimir Putin did this. We had a journalist such as Seymour Hirsch writing articles saying that Vladimir Putin is not to be blamed, but the US is the one to be blamed for such actions. And he wrote a very complete article explaining his theory on this, explaining why the US did it, how they did it. There was a lot of details on his article. And he was able to convince a lot of people on the West that the US have done this. Now, Hirsch's article gives a lot of detail on this. He says that Biden is directly behind this whole thing. Remember, after all, Joe Biden made a statement saying that if Russia invade Ukraine, there will be no Nord Stream. And on his article, he even gave details about where the divers were trained in Panama City. And the details are not just about where they were trained. The details are also about the rehearsals that happened during NATO exercise and how they plant mines and how they detonate them with signal. This article is very convincing because of how rich it is on details. Now, writing an article with so many details works both ways. In one hand, it's very good to convince those who want to believe you. On the other hand, if someone does not want to believe you, they have a lot of details that they can investigate and find ways to debunk you detail after detail. One of those details that he got it wrong was the amount of bombs. He talked about eight bombs when in fact they replaced four bombs and those bombs only damaged three pipes. Now, other holes on his theory besides the amount of bombs is the shipment movements on the area. He talks about many ships moving the area and how the trainings occur. And the thing is, the images do not collaborate with his narrative. And the CIA and the US see his narrative as pure fantasy. Now, we basically have two conflict narratives. We have the narrative that says Vladimir Putin did it, and we have the narrative that says the US did it. Now, we do not have hard evidence, and neither of those are taking credit for doing this. Now, we already have the fact that Biden promised there will be no Nord Stream, yet Biden is pointing the finger to Vladimir Putin. So let's think about this. Has Vladimir Putin actually done this? The thing is, I don't believe he did. Because after all, he got hurt financially by not being able to collect money. And when you are at war, you do need money. So it would be like shooting yourself in the foot doing such things. So I do not see Vladimir Putin doing this on the time of war when he needs funds, he needs money to fund that war. So in my view, Vladimir Putin did not do it. So now we have left just one more main suspect, which is the US. And the thing is, besides Joe Biden promising that there will be no Nord Stream, we do not have any hard evidence that points to the US. All is pretty much speculation. We have not found the divers. We have no one confessing that they were hired to do this. Also, we do not have American Navy boats on the area with enough time with divers to pull the bomb there. Now, without any hard evidence pointing to Vladimir Putin and any hard evidence pointing to the US, we need to come up with our third suspect. And our third suspect in this case is Ukraine. After all, Ukraine was and still is at war with Russia at the time of its explosion. So Ukraine would be our third suspect with great motivation. Once we consider Ukraine to be a possible suspect, we do find some evidence that suggests Ukraine's involvement. For instance, some journalists have found evidence that linked some Ukrainian divers to the crime. The thing is, a group of Ukrainians has actually rented a boat which will happen to be around the area for about two weeks, which is the time required to be able to have divers go down on that depth and probably place the bombs on the pipes. Now, we also have articles on the Washington Post talking about the plan. Look at this. U.S. had intelligence of detailed Ukrainian plan to attack the Nord Stream pipeline. So it seems like the whole thing was done by a small group of Ukrainian divers. Now, once we know the Ukrainians were involved, we have to ask ourselves the following question. And the question is, was that an individual group or was that a group under the command of Zelensky? Now, of course, Zelensky has to deny this. And the reason why he's denying this is because if he admits this, it would be a problem. Because remember, 
He's being sponsored by NATO allies. After all, Germany is the second country to contribute most in terms of aid in Ukraine. The thing is, if he admits that he was involved, he that put him in trouble with NATO countries. After all, he did attack the property of NATO countries, if indeed he was involved on in this. Because remember, the pipeline belonged to Germany, Netherlands and France. Those are all NATO countries. Now, in my view, not only was he involved, but also he could not have done this without the approval of the US. I do not see a way that he would be able to do this without the green light from the US. And also we need to remember that Biden had said very clearly that if Vladimir Putin invade Ukraine, there will be no Nord Stream. At least those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Let me know that on the comments below. Now, besides Hirsch article, we also have to look at Anderson's theory. Now, Anderson has experience on this and he's a man prepared to talk on the matter. He's a retired engineer and he questions Hirsch's narrative. And his question is about the bombs because the number of explosions on Hirsch article are different than the actual number of explosions. Anderson also found four explosions. I remember there were four pipes, but one pipe had two bombs, which means that one pipe is still remains intact. And it's not just me saying this, the report says that. And we also have footage of Vladimir Putin confirming that. But look at this. And the Nord Stream 2 was damaged. But one pipe is safe and sound, and gas can be supplied to Europe through it. But Germany does not open it. We are ready, please. There's another route through Poland called Yamal Europe which also allows for a large flow. Poland has closed it, but Poland packs from the German hand, it receives money from the pan-European funds, and Germany is the main donor to these pan-European funds. Germany feeds Poland to a certain extent, and they close their route to Germany. Why? I don't understand. Ukraine, to which the Germans supply weapons and give money. Germany is the second sponsor of the United States in terms of financial aid to Ukraine. There are two gas routes through Ukraine. They simply closed one route, the Ukrainians. Open the second route and please get gas from Russia. They do not open it. Why don't the Germans say? Look guys, we give you money and weapons. Open up the valve, please. Let the gas from Russia pass through for us. We're buying liquefied gas at exorbitant prices in Europe, which brings the level of our competitiveness and economy in general down to zero. Do you want us to give you money? Let us have the decent existence, make money for our economy, because this is where the money we give you comes from. They refuse to do so. Why? Ask them. That is what is like in their heads. Those are highly incompetent people. So those were the words of Vladimir Putin. Now, the question still remains the same. Germany is paying for the highest price of energy on the planet. I have actually made a video about how much Germany is paying for its energy. If you want to find out more about that, link for that on the description below. Now, why are they not opening those pipes? Vladimir Putin talks about Nord Stream, there's still one pipe. He talks about the route through Poland and he talks about another pipe in Ukraine. Now, the US had specifically asked Germany not to get liquefied gas from Russia because the US was gonna provide that to Germany. Now, Biden has halted the export of natural gas to Germany. Link for that on the description below. We made a video about this. Now, once Germany had stopped buying gas from Russia and became dependent on the US, Biden is halting the export because apparently he does not have enough to supply his own country and yet be able to supply Germany. Now, in my view, Biden and the German authorities should have thought of that before they stopped buying liquid gas from Russia. Now, the thing is, a situation like this only makes German economic situation worse and that, of course, is going to hurt the industrial sector of Germany. This situation makes the world look at Germany and see Germany as weak, or at least question who is controlling the German country. And why is Germany engaging into treaties and agreement that is hurting Germany on the long run? Now, in terms of consequences, no other country has suffered more than Germany. And of course, Europe is also suffering because Europe is paying for a high price of energy as well. Now, in terms of environment, there is no much damage to the environment. Another thing is, I do not think, regardless of the investigation, I do not think they're resulting in any immediate war. 
but I do believe that this will start to be a crack on NATO alliance. After all, in my view, it is an attack of a NATO country into another NATO country because I believe the US was ahead of this. Now, even if there is no consequence in terms of retaliation of Germany, the thing is Germany eventually is going to have to make a decision to continue to support the US, to continue being part of NATO, to continue doing things that please the US or trying to defend its own interest. Now, my question to you is, what are your thoughts? What do you think would be the consequence of this explosion in terms of geopolitics? And what do you think should be the right step for Germany to take? Or do you believe what Germany is doing is right? Let me know that on the comments below. And with this, I wrap up this video. So please don't forget to like, subscribe, click the notification bell, and above it all, share this video with someone else who can benefit from this. This is it for now. See you guys next video. Kaboom. Goodbye.